very few and more and more new businesses are not fully integrated businesses. They depend on a lot of partnerships to deliver value. Right? So identification of what are those key partnerships become very important you know, activity or a very important building block of our business model. Yeah? Why do you have partnerships? Because you need to optimize. You can't do everything. Economies of scale. You know, if I'm just doing five of these, somebody is doing 500, obviously it is better to buy from him rather than, you know, do it myself. Reduction of risk, uncertainty. Okay. Acquisition of a particular resource, a broker network, a channel. Okay. These are the, why do you create those partnerships? And it could be in the form of strategic alliance, it could be a cooperation, wherein you know, in parts you compete, but in other parts you cooperate. It could be joint venture, create new businesses, could be a buyer supply relationship, a supply chain. In certain types of businesses, supply chains are so important that unless you know those chains are set properly, your entire revenue cycle will get into order. So for your own business, for your own business, identify what are the key partnerships that I need to have. Maybe you outsource a part of your work. Maybe you outsource a part of your important work, development, customer support. They become your key partnerships. Because the, to the end customer, they are looking at you as delivering their service. And whatever your partner delivers actually is perceived as your delivery product or service. Identify those partnerships. Your supply, your <coughs> uh, acquisition of raw material, if that is your you know, key thing. Define what the constraint is, what the customer sees and how, who is delivering that. And those partnerships become your key partnerships that you need to identify. <coughs> Cost structure. We have revenue on the right and we have cost on the left. Right? Cost structures, you really have to define what is the fixed cost. Regardless of whether I sell one unit or I don't sell any unit or I sell thousands of units of whatever I am trying to sell. A license, a software license or a product or whatever it is. What is the cost that I incur regardless of the volume of business that I do? What is the variable cost that goes proportionately with my sale of my goods and services? Identification of these two and appropriately segmenting your activities in either one of these. Make sure that you define your break-even points and you define your financial models. Economies of scale, economies of scope are two concepts to bring costs down or to bring costs under control. Identify each element of your cost structure. It could be people cost, it could be development cost, it could be you know infrastructure cost, it could be network cost. Whatever are the cost elements come into this building block of your business. Okay. I have to just tell you one more thing. We created this chain. We started with customer segment, value proposition. All the way through, you might actually be able to connect all those dots. And hence, you use the same you know, uh, color uh, paper so that you can actually define. And it is possible that certain costs are not connected to that. Fixed costs are not connected. So don't worry about it if it is not. But if you are able to connect these dots together, it is much easier for you to manage this based on your business variables. Right? Can you explain the economies of scope? Scope, okay. So, for example, um, if I'm if I'm if I'm selling a piece of software, okay, and I give you my own example because uh, I'm actually familiar with that. And I said I sell my product. But once I sell my product, Microsoft sells a whole lot of licenses. You know, because it is required that they need a SQL Server license, they need this, they need a blah, blah, blah. Somebody who's going to deploy my product actually needs to buy a server. So HP sells or, you know, uh, Dell sells servers. What is happening actually is because I sold my product, lot of the other players also sold their products as a result. If my product wasn't sold, somebody else's product was sold, instead of Microsoft SQL licenses, maybe Oracle license would have been bought. Right? 
and maybe instead of buying a SQL, uh, instead of buying a, a Dell box, they would have bought a Sun box, right? So what is happening is that I am scoping my sale in a very narrow way just to sell my own product. But if I increase the scope of what I am trying to sell, and if I say I will not just sell my product, but also some of these, I actually leave that revenue on the table. Somebody else comes and picks it up. So by being able to increase my scope of my, what my offering is, which is directly related to what I am selling, I am able to generate more revenue from a customer. This is one example. Yes? Is cross selling and merchandising the same? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cross selling and merchandising is not the same. I, that's the question. Yes. Yes. It will be, absolutely. Yes, it will. It, will. it is expansion of scope. Exactly. Cross selling. If my customer is buying, he's, he's my PM. If my customer has bought something, can I cross sell something to him? Because if I don't sell it, somebody is going to sell it and make that sale anyway. It actually depends on your product and the, the time required and the expense required to create that customer relationship. If your uh, product or service is such that customers walk into, into door and you know the real expense or real uh, investment is actually servicing the customer as against acquiring the customer, you may want to you know, choose carefully what you uh, what you service. But when it, your investment is making the you know, getting the customer into your door, then you look at what else the customer wants. Then I can say because I have invested a lot of time to create that relationship with the customer, to create that credibility, and then in the increment a lot of cross sell is a, a, a logical extension. And it, at times, the cross sold products may actually subsidize your first thing. Okay, so here we have a complete canvas, right? Here we have the customer segments, we've got value proposition, relationships, we've got the channels, we've got activities, partners, we've got cost structures, we've got channels and revenue streams all lined up in a nice looking jigsaw puzzle, right? I'm not going to take the time now, or I'm not going to, this was the third exercise to put those four pieces together, but it, this will take time. So I will skip that. Please do that. Uh, definitely do this, the right four, you know, boxes. Don't skip them, just because they are at the end. But please take the time to, to put this down, yeah? How would you segment the resources because everybody will be using this? Yeah, it is possible. So what I, the point I was to make is costs and resources. You may not be able to actually segment by your revenue stream or it is possible, that's fine. But then, if it is possible to segment, it is good to identify that. So you know what each of your customer segments and what are the resources that are required for closing that. And there will be certain things that you will require regardless. Okay. This is where also the collaborative uh, aspect of the entire team working together plays a very important part. 15 minutes was to tell you to identify <coughs> each one of those and there could be some dependent and some independent you know, elements of cost, elements of results. But we'll skip that for now. Please do it, you know, um, at the end of this whenever you go home, etc. Et so really, what the canvas has done is put this down, which are the key elements of your business, you know, which has overlaid that into a, into a nice canvas. Right? This looks exactly the paper look when it was blank in front of you. And your, your customer segments, your you know, base value proposition or your offer to the customer, which is at the center, things on the left, things on the right, are is your suggested business model definition. So these are the building blocks of your Use this, fill it up, iterate, question, but more importantly, share it with all your people. Put it on a wall next to your water cooler. Okay? You might find people suggesting, hey, actually, I didn't know this was my revenue, this was the resource of revenue for me. I didn't know that this is how it is. And you might also get people saying, you know what, why don't you add this little piece to this? You haven't considered this. You think this is possible? Yeah. What that does for you is it, you remember this, when you are saying something and people are, you know, 
not 100% in tune, you no, know, this this has a potential to stop that, and people will immediately understand when it is put on these blocks as to what this is. People will say revenue. The guy will even say, oh yeah, this is what it is, right? So what it does actually is allows a constructive communication across the organization and new ideas can, that can clarify the purpose, also add sets of revenues, optimize resources, blah, 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 blah. Why? Because we are not talking a common language. There is a common structure. When I am talking in French, the other guy is not trying to understand, you know, interpret that in English or something like that, right? So, so that is the basic thing. Uh, you know, advantage and this is the basic value that something XRL like this can do. Clarify your own thought process. Create those linkages and communicate them very effectively with your organization. Okay. I'm going to you know quickly look at we all know times of India, right? I want you know us to quickly talk about what are the customer segments for times of India. Yeah? Uh, of course, there's Hindi, English, and whatever. But customer segment would be readers, advertisers. Those would be any other customer segments. Corporates, B2C, and B2B. Yeah, that's the advertisers, right? No, by B2B, I also mean the readers in the corporate sector. Okay, but but the behavior will be very different for the economic times and times of India. Okay, you know the the economic strata you're talking about, right? We talk about times of India. Right. right. So we will we will write down. If we were to create a canvas for Times of India, right? We will list down all these, you know. And within that, a reader within reader there will be a sports fanatic. There will be a you know share market fanatic. Whatever. So those are sub uh, you know segments of that customer class of that customer segment. But by and large, advertisers. And readers would be a very high level definition of a newspaper, right? What is the value proposition for each one of them? Yeah, for, for, for a reader, it would be a cheap, authentic source of news. Right? For an advertiser, it's a very large reader, so their ability to reach out to a large set of customers. That would be the value proposition, right? So, um, how the, what is the channel? Channel could be a print, could be online. Today, a lot of people read Times of India online. Right. So, go back to customer relation. So, we actually, you know, I look at what is it that we are delivering to each one of these. What does Times of India deliver? And what is the value proposition? And what are the key activities Times of India needs to do to be able to do this? So, news gathering. Printing is a key activity. Unless this happens, none of these will happen, right? Reporting infrastructure, all reporting reporters sitting all over the country, or you know their OP vans and all that, so important for them. The financial strength. Do you know that Times of India, when it goes in, goes into a new city, practically distributes the paper free for years before they start generating revenue, right? There was a time 20 years back, Times of India was only in Mumbai, right? Today, Times of India is number one newspaper in how many cities? The market was distributed. If it is Bangalore, it has to be taken here, right? Okay. If it is uh, Chennai, it has to be Hindu. If it is Punsa, uh, Hyderabad, so you are right. Punsa, we call it chronicle. Taken chronicle, right? If it is Delhi, it is Hindustan Times. If it is Calcutta, it is Statesman. Right? Telegraph. Telegraph, whatever. Telegraph. In Pune, where I come from, there used to be a thing called Maharashtra here. Sardar is Marathi for Times of India. But Times of India has, a, you know, the way it goes in each city and creates a leadership position there, they practically subsidize. Today, Times of India, I am talking about Marathi newspapers. Uh, Saka is a Marathi newspaper in, in, in Pune, which is, which is by far the market leader. Last year, Maharashtra Times for the first time came to the city and offered the newspaper free for first three months. Then it offered a newspaper 99 rupees for the full year. Times of India cannot make money at that, right? There is no way it can make money, it's regardless of whatever. But they have the strength because what they do is they drive the competition. 
Today, what is the situation in Maharashtra? I mean, Deccan Herald in Bangalore, right? Hindustan Times. These are Hindu. Hindu. Absolutely. So the point is, the financial strength becomes a key resource for a business like this. That's why I thought I'll listen. Okay. Government, because newspaper is a very controlled commodity, and this newsprint is imported and it's available on import license, blah, blah, blah. So ability to make sure that the government is on the right side is so important because it will just drive the cost structure, you know, in a very different manner. Okay, so this is just one example. But uh, there is just one example that I will talk about and this actually comes directly from the book that, that is here. And this actually shows how as you validate and you talk to customers, a business model gets, uh, you know, evolved over a period of time or get, it gets iterated and I am just going to spend a little bit of time on that. This is the concept that I want to get across. Here is a, a new uh, non-invasive technology to treat cancer. When this was this called memoptics using optical technology. So they first they started and they looked at what are my customer segments, what are my relationships, what is what how am I going to go about it to generate the revenue stream that I am going to but as they went into the market, you know, they iterated on that and they found that actually the partner could be this segment if they had not thought of earlier. You know, that value proposition, you know, can be very different depending on who the, the customer is. Okay? And they had to actually remove certain segments from their target market. Okay. And this liberation happened. Now, the way it can happen, so this is the eighth or ninth version of that. The way it can happen for your own business and it can happen in, on your canvas that you created and you stuck there and you iterate that and you go back to the customer, test the customer value proposition. If you feel that customer that it is in variance with what your assumption is, you have a simple thing to do. Take another post it note, stick it on top of that. Right? So what you do get actually is not just your original business model as you envisaged it when you started, but as you went through different iterations, how those you know number of post-it notes have got added to it and how it is looking today. And mind you, that is also a work in progress. So there is a further scope. So the post-it note has a great technology because it can stick and it can you know you can remove it, you can keep sticking on top of it. And the number of post-it notes that you stick on top of each other it will tell you how many times you have iterated your business model, how it has changed over a period of time. All when you have tested it in the marketplace and you have played out multiple combinations of these models. Yeah? That is the biggest value. So today in our uh, discussion uh, for the last about two hours, two and a half hours, what we tried to do <coughs> was to create a, a canvas a technique which will allow us to think through some of the building blocks of our business model, put them down in a way in which we can very easily analyze and dwell on it, think through it, iterate it. It is so cheap to do it in this way as compared to going out in the market with a product or a service, spend two, three years and then finding out that we are not doing certain things. Like so I hope that this discussion has helped you doing that. The next piece that we are going to do and the time which we had allocated was to demonstrate the iPad app. Okay? This technology hasn't worked. As you know, as you came to the room, we were trying to struggle with it. Right? But you know, these apps do the same thing that we can do manually. But uh, it just is a little bit more sexier. So if people are into that, okay, this is an iPad app you can download, and which will allow you to create this business model canvas and iterate. And not just do that; it also has some additional build and resources. It allows you to add parts, it allows you to add certain assumptions, blah 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 blah. Which is a, you know, as software people or technology people, you know, this is all easy to do. But it's a nice. A uh, little piece which we were trying to demonstrate, and Chetan is the expert in this iPad app business, but unfortunately, I have stole the thunder out of that because uh, we couldn't get the thing working with, uh, with this projector. But I think 
importantly, as we have discussed, is about the concept. concept. It's about the concept, as long as you all understand the concept. Now, uh, with this, I want to uh, really you know, finish. I have just completed the allotted additional 15 minutes. But we can spend some time in, in, in discussions if that is big. But if you guys want to walk out with your you know, business canvas of your own business, uh, you are welcome to do that. Uh, if, if you really think you have spent some time or you have uh, you know, uh, got some good insight, <coughs> want to share it with your team, it is a great thing to take home. Okay? So please do uh, take that home and, uh, and thank you very much. If you have any questions, I will be very happy to. What is the app? What is the app for? Yeah. It is called Business Model Generator App. Uh, business model toolkit. Yeah, business model toolkit. Yeah, it's business model toolkit. It's free. It's not free. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty nine ninety nine. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Actually, unless you're a consultant helping people to do this app, that's not really a must. This is this is a great thing. You know, what you created here is a great thing for your own business. This is no better than this. It is just a fancy thing. You know. yeah. Just you know, this content wise, there is no difference. And more importantly, the biscuits try to have a thing on the. Yeah, iPad. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So let me close this uh, with a joke about these biscuits, right, and about apps. So there was this. This is the joke that uh, Devang Mehta used to tell a lot of times when they just try to say to the world that IT industry, Indian Indian programmers are really good. Can an Indian apply for that job? So, French is called for an interview. It's a closed door. Twenty grey-haired people like me are sitting and the question is asked, please tell me what is 2 plus 2? Right? The French guy is absolutely, he's, he's a UCL graduate and blah 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 and all that, right? You're not an UCL graduate. <laughs> <laughs> He thinks it's an offense to ask for such a high position. What is he supposed to do? I refuse to answer in a French accent, which I can't limit it. So I refuse to answer this question. This is below my dignity. Then comes an American guy. He's a techie wizard. He pulls out his iPad app for calculator. You know, plus two plus two. And says, See, this is four. The Indian guy says, What is I? He says, What is two plus two? He says, What is the question again? It's two plus two. Who pay? So first he closes all the windows, blinds. He says, please ask me the question again. He says, what is 2 plus 2? He says, you know, this must be a very important question because at this level you are asking me this. So my answer is, what do you want it to be? <laughs> <laughs> so, so use the app for what it is. <laughs> Content and form are different things. But I hope uh, this has been an interesting exercise for you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. On this note, on behalf your, of all of you, your email and phone number. My email is uh, vishwas dot mahajan at pune dot dot mahajan m h a j n. Just as it sounds very phonetic, pune dot My number is nine eight nine zero one. Mahajan No, vishwas dot mahajan at pune dot dot to attend your session because it is a houseful and the volunteers kept us out. <laughs> so we just come in here to say a big thank you to Vishwas. He has been a great support for Thai, a very active charter member, president of Thai Tuning. I think he's already been introduced. And uh, a big thank you from all of us to you, Vishwas. This is a small contribution that we make to midday meals uh, on behalf of speakers. That's so nice. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Chetan, thank you. So Chetan, besides being a co-speaker, is also a member of TAI and volunteers about the <coughs> Thank you. Phone number? Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> I put up your... Oh, you put up my mobile number. Is that correct? Is that correct? Uh, this one, my yeah, this is correct. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. What's your mobile number? 98901. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.